Welcome to my tour of Blackpool Sea Life. Blackpool Sea Life is located on the seafront near the central pier at Blackpool. It's home to many animals, some of which used to live in the aquarium in the bottom of the Blackpool Tower. This aquarium used to have the largest spider crab on public display in the world. Its name was Big Daddy and unfortunately it died at 80 years old in 2016. With a claw span of 10 feet, this truly was a sad occurrence. Upon entry into Sea Life Blackpool, you will be greeted by many native fish. This is to represent the amazing variety of fish that live in the Sea of Blackpool that otherwise you would not normally see. One of my favourite fish from this section was the wolf eel. The wolf eel feeds on many crustaceans and small fish. Its muscular jaw and weird teeth help facilitate this diet. My favourite thing about this wolf eel, however, was how grumpy it looked as soon as it removed itself from the diver's helmet located in its habitat and it swam straight back in. This next tank showed off the tidal environments that many fish in the UK waters call home. It's nice to see that these environments are being represented in aquariums because generally people tend to find these fish quite drab, such as the mullet that you can see in this video, but I find them really interesting and otherwise you wouldn't see these fish. Tidal coastlines are often quite murky and therefore it's quite hard to imagine any fish living in the water, so I find it quite interesting to see these otherwise unknown fish. The fish in focus here is the red gurnard. Despite you not being able to see its colour because of the blue lighting, these are bottom dwelling fish which live on seabeds around the UK. On either side of the gurnard they have three weird leg like protrusions which can give the appearance of walking when they move as they move with the fish. However, they are not legs and the fish does not walk with them. As if this fish couldn't get any weirder, it has two very large pectoral fins which are beautiful in colour and almost look like peacock feathers. This little wrasse was very friendly and came right up to the camera. However, this peculiar orange looking lobster was quite the opposite. It was feeding time in the rock pools and these three crabs here that have been spotted were all fighting over the same piece of fish. They were obviously a little shellfish. All jokes aside, the way that these crabs use their claws to manoeuvre food towards their mouth is rather interesting to watch. The elongated spotty creatures here are actually dogfish. Dogfish are part of the cat shark family, which are relatives of the shark. Obviously, they're quite a lot smaller, so they feed on much smaller prey, such as worms, crustaceans and small fish. These creatures are responsible for many of the mermaid's purses you may see wash up on the seashore. I don't think it's just me who agrees when I say that lumpfish are quite adorable. With their massive bodies and ginormous eyes, they're rather cute when they swim around with their tiny little fins. This little one lived near a welly and two small rays. An interesting fact about these fish is that they're used in salmon farms to eat parasites off the salmon. Now, onto the largest native tank that they had in the aquarium. This tank contained many large specimens, including haddock, cod, sea bass, rays, and larger dogfish. One individual in this tank who was quite peculiar was a sea bass with a hunchback. In some of these larger species of dogfish, you can see their similarity to sharks, and despite their skittish nature, I surely wouldn't want to get bitten by one of these. In some of these videos, you will see the rays swimming up onto the glass. For some people who haven't seen the bottom of the ray before, that's actually where their mouth is, and the eyes are situated on the top half of the ray. Rays are very inquisitive creatures and therefore swim across the glass to investigate the surface. In 
the following two videos you will see another larger dogfish swimming with its nose above the water. Personally, I'm not sure why it does this, but it looks almost as if it sneezes at the end of its movement, though I suspect it could have just had an itchy nose. The floor of this tank seems to be where all the action was, with frequent pileups happening between the rays and the dogfish. This next tank simulated the environment of a shallow tropical reef. There was a plethora of different fish inside this tank. Some of the more notable specimens included a wobby gong, lactic reef sharks, and the blue spotted ribbon tail ray. These species live in warm Indian oceans and therefore this tank was trying to replicate that feeling. Around the tank there were many portholes where you could observe the fish through them, which gave the feeling that you were inside the tank. You'll see me in one of these portholes in the video where the sharks come really close and so one of the rays comes up to say hello. I really enjoyed the experience of going through the portholes and some observant viewers may have spotted that one of the black tip reef sharks has an upturned nose. This smaller stingray was harassing a larger stingray in the tank and it's obviously got a little bit of a small man syndrome. The next tank had quite a variety of species inside of it. First seen are some squirrel fish and other assorted fish and then probably the largest moray in the aquarium which is this big green moray. However, my favourite was the unicorn fish, as it looked so peculiar. The continuation of the reef theme was done with many small tanks with many small fish in, as they would not normally be highlighted. One of these fish who was very excited to see us was the puffer fish. He kept doing barrel rolls and swimming up to the glass. Possibly the most famous tropical reef fish is the clownfish. If you want to learn more about these fish to impress your friends, then I'd suggest watching my videos on 5 facts about clownfish. From one excited fish to another, there was a little box fish who was very happy to see us and kept swimming towards the porthole to interact with us. He shared his tank with multiple different types of clownfish. Not many people know about the multiple types of clownfish and here you can see the black and white clownfish and also a tomato clownfish. This blue eyed tetra has an iridescent layer in its eye which reflects blue light back. As beautiful as the lionfish may appear, it is actually a deadly predator and invasive in many countries. It conceals very large spines which are venomous and therefore is not preyed upon by many species. If you watch the video carefully, you will see that this shark in fact walks on its fins. Not only this, but the shark also possesses an eye-like symbol on its body, which is used to deter predators making for one interesting fish. One thing Blackpool Sea Life isn't short of is that of moray eels. There are a lot of moray eels in the aquarium, however the one in focus here showed us a very good view of its jaw and fairly scary teeth. An extremely interesting fact about moray eels is that they possess a second set of jaws much like the aliens from the film Alien. They use these jaws to pull their prey into their mouth and engulf it. The fish you may recognise here, being Dory from Finding Nemo, is actually a blue tail. This is a species of surgeon fish that actually inhabits Indo-Pacific reefs. These odd looking fish are garden eels. 
They are called this because in large collections they almost look like blades of grass in a lawn. When threatened, these fish will go underneath the sand and hide from their predators, which I guess makes them the fish version of Wacamole. Like most public aquariums, Blackpool Sea Life possesses a small freshwater section. This section contains many species such as the blind cave fish that you'll see now. It also contains some rather gloomy looking piranhas and some very energetic turtles that wouldn't stop fighting with each other. Despite the energy levels of the turtles, my favourite fish in this section was the archer fish. These fish live in brackish waters and are known to shoot water droplets at insects hanging on leaves above so then they drop in the water where the fish can consume them. Blackpool Sea Lab does an amazing job of exhibiting this behaviour as at feeding times they put insects on the target and the fish will shoot them. Unfortunately I wasn't there at the time where you could see this. Further on in the facility, we saw lots of larger moray eels in their own individual tanks. These fish can come in any sorts of colours and these large ones were a lot more active. There was also a scorpion fish which is very dangerous as if stepped on it can cause immense harm with their venomous spines. Upon first glance you would assume that this fish here is a moray eel, but in fact it is not, and is instead a snowflake eel which is a much smaller cousin of the moray eel. Now here we enter Blackpool Sea Life's largest tank, the Ocean Tunnel. This tank contains a wide array of species, including giant green sea turtles, black tip sharks, white tip sharks, stingrays, shovel nose sharks, nurse sharks, grouper, vampire fish and many more fish, as said on the website. Many of these animals have names such as the Phoenix the Sea Turtle, Gary the Grouper, the largest of the sharks in this tank are the nurse sharks. These large sharks can get up to 10 feet long and lie on the bottom of the seabed. This is because they are nocturnal and will feed at night. These sharks can sometimes appear sluggish due to their nocturnal nature and often divers tend to take pictures with these sharks. However, if you are ever in this situation, I suggest you do not touch the sharks or handle the sharks as they have been known to bite if manhandled. Despite not being as sharp as other sharks teeth, these sharks have very strong jaws for crushing prey. They also possess a barbel on either side of their mouth in order to find prey that is hidden. Despite the sharks being the main attraction in this tank, the rays and the shoals of fish definitely stood out. All the animals in this tank were very interested to see people and would come up to the main window and interact with us. The animals were a lot more keen to interact with the main window, especially the nurse sharks who like to lay down in front of it. Being able to see these sharks up close really allowed you to appreciate the actual size of these creatures. We managed to time our visit fairly well and got to see the sharks, the turtles and the rays feed. In the following video from the tunnel you'll be able to see these animals congregate and feed. As they aren't the cleanest of eaters, their scraps will go to feed on the smaller fish in the tank. In one of these clips you'll be able to see a nurse shark grab and eat a fish. This video highlights how messy these creatures are at eating as you can see all the waste coming out of its gills. In such a large tank there's always something going on. It's very interesting to watch the complex relationships that these animals have with each other. It was almost very difficult to film because there was so much happening and even with two of us I feel like we didn't get everything. The full glass wall window display was really amazing because it showed the entire vastness and broadness of this tank. It was really fascinating to watch as you could always see something going on and with such a well stocked tank that was very vital. This was my favourite part of the aquarium as you could just sit back and take it all in. I'm going to now leave you with the rest of this video to enjoy and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you'd like me to do more voiceovers like this and it would mean the world if you could interact with this video and let me know how it was. 
I hope everyone has a lovely day and I'll see you next time.